All right, so the next type of error that we will be talking about is the logic error. Uh, we are covering C.2 and C.3, which are both uh, sections involving different methods of addressing errors in the logic of your program. Logic errors are when you are trying to make a program that does a very specific task, but it accidentally does the wrong task. It's not like a syntax error or anything like that. The syntax is completely correct, but it's incorrect logic. You uh, went about solving the problem in maybe the wrong way. Uh, this could be misunderstanding what the problem actually is, or it could be doing something as simple as typing the wrong operator uh, by accident. If you are expecting certain results and your program does not actually work the right way, but it's not giving you any errors before you create the actual application, you know, before you compile it and run it, you don't see any of the squiggles or anything like that. That is when you start seeing a logic error. Some examples are, uh, let's say you have a variable that's supposed to contain a sum of two other variables, but you accidentally multiply them together instead of adding them together. That would be a logic error. You're trying to calculate a sum, you accidentally calculate a product instead. Infinite loops are also a um, example of a logic error uh, because somewhere in your combination of loop conditions and updates, something went wrong. Either the updates are bad, you know, maybe they're updating a particular variable in the wrong direction, or you forgot to update a particular variable, or maybe you're updating in the right direction, like counting up with some kind of counter, but your loop condition is checking for like the counter being less than a number instead of greater than a number or vice versa. So that would be another example of a logic error is something in the logic of your loop, whether it be the condition of the loop or the actual thing that's updating some of the variables involved in that condition. When, when, those, when those pieces of logic are bad, then you get an infinite loop. Now, one way you can actually um, try to find a logic error, especially if you don't know where exactly things are going wrong and all you see is that you have an incorrect value in your output, well, you can try to step through your code. So in normal execution, all lines of code run in order one after another and they don't stop. You click the button that, uh, that calculates the result Every line in button calculate underscore click is going to run one by one all at a time and then it will reach the end of the procedure and exit and that's it and all you see is the output. But if you need to actually see what's going on behind the scenes, the debugger lets you step into a procedure. And that means that you're able to run each line of code one line at a time. You step through the procedure one step at a time, looking at the variables, looking at the values that each of those variables have, looking at the operations, seeing what you're expecting to see and what you're not expecting to see based on some uh, predefined like test case that you make. And then you can see when a particular variable has a value that you're not expecting, maybe that is where the errors are starting to happen and you can look back and see, well, what's causing that variable to have this value? Oh, well, this uh, equation is wrong, or I accidentally read from the wrong text box, or anything like that. So that allows you to actually find out when the errors are happening in your procedure a lot easier. Now, back in chapter five, I actually showed you an example of what stepping through code was like when I actually, you know, was going through this loop and showing you how it worked line by line by line by line by line and so on. And we could see what each of the variables are having, uh, what all of the um, output was looking like, the next line that was going to be run. The fact that it was like pausing at 
and saying, okay, this is the next line that will run. And then after we run that line, we see what the result of that line is, right? Um, that's the idea with stepping right here. So if you want to look through that and remind yourself of these uh, examples that I showed when I was kind of stepping through these loops, quote unquote, um, that would be a probably pretty helpful thing to look at. All right, so the way that you um, actually start stepping through your program is by using a breakpoint. Now, please note that the textbook is actually wrong in uh, section C.2. You actually have to use a breakpoint in order to actually step through everything. I don't know if this is a version difference between uh, Visual Studio 2019, and which they used, and Visual Studio 2022, which we're using right now. But regardless, you'll always have to use a breakpoint. A breakpoint is a mark on a line of code that tells Visual Basic to pause execution before running that line. And then once it pauses, you can actually step through the code and find errors. And it actually allows you, as it's paused, to look at the different values that the variables you're working with have. So you can pause it, look at all the values, see if they make sense, and then step to the next line, look at all the values, see if they make sense. Step to the next line, look at all the values, see if they make sense, and so on and so on. Uh, you can stop it at the beginning of a procedure in order to look through the entirety of the procedure, but you can also stop it part of the way through in order to try to, you know, skip a whole bunch of stuff that you're really, really confident about. And you can just uh, get right to the things that you're not worried about. Although you have to be careful if you do this because you want to make sure that you're really, really confident that it works. Um, because if it doesn't, but you think it does, and then you skip it, and then you're looking after the breakpoint, and you can't figure out what's going on, but the error was before the breakpoint, that's a bit of a problem. So at the very least, once you hit the breakpoint, go back and make sure every single variable value uh, makes sense. It's what you're expecting for the particular answer. All right, so what we have is an application that is supposed to calculate discounts for a particular price. So I put in how much an item is or how much a subtotal is, and then it gives me the 10%, 20%, and 30% discount for that item. So we can take a look at running it. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll just type 100 and I'll hit calculate. And you'll see that it's not working because all of these discounts are reading a zero, which is not what we would expect. We would expect $10, $20, and $30 as a 10, 20, and 30% discounts. So something is wrong. We need to take a look at what that is. All right, so here is the code and there are no um, actual errors in terms of syntax, right? So this code should run just fine. And in fact, it was running perfectly fine. It was just giving the wrong output. So it's our job now to try to figure out what's going on. So let's take a look. Um, the way we have been actually trying to test our application so far is making sure that this is in debug mode and hitting start, and that works totally fine. The only thing we need to do to really start stepping through code is to add a breakpoint. For example, I know that the error is happening when I am trying to calculate the price, which means, sorry, calculate the discount, which means that I should probably be looking somewhere in button calc underscore click. So naively, I can just hit this little area right here. This um, grayish uh, sort of column at the very left allows me to place breakpoints anywhere I want. And you'll see this red circle pop up, and you'll see these red lines actually pop up right here. Um, I'm going to get rid of most of these. But if we want to um, actually start doing things in the uh, in this actual function, a good breakpoint location could be the function header. 
So let's see what happens when we actually run the function. Or in this case, it's a uh, event procedure. That, my apologies. OK, so I start. Uh, and nothing is different just yet. But when I type in 100 and then I actually press calculate, like so, we'll see a pause. Now, the yellow line and this yellow arrow right here is the next line of code that is going to be actually um, run. Uh, it hasn't actually run this function header yet. It will be running the function header, but it hasn't done it yet. So that's what the yellow line means right there. Also, note that we have a couple of cool windows right here. This autos and this locals. Now, they do two different things, even though they look similar. Autos shows us what variables we've come across so far when we hit the breakpoint. So, um, you know, we're at this breakpoint. We're about to run the function header. It will see the variable sender, e, and then also this me one, which is how the class refers to itself. But me will also be there. So that will be the ones that it comes across. And as we step through this procedure, it will update to include deck price, deck discount, deck uh, discount. Sorry, deck discount 10, 20, 30, all of those. Locals is a little bit more predictive because it sees all of the uh, variables that are in this event procedure. Now, the difference between the two, because obviously at the end of this, is autos will see all of these decimal discounts and stuff like that. But if we actually uh, have button calc underscore click call some procedure, which has its own variables, auto will see all of the variables in button calc underscore click, and locals will see only the variables in the current procedure that we are stepping through. So that's really important to note. It, to note. Now, these windows aren't default. The way you have to actually get them is by clicking debug in the top menu up here, going to windows, and then you'll want to click autos right here and locals right there. And that's how you can get access to these windows, which makes it a lot easier to look at variables. You can also hover over the variable names and you'll see the values that they either currently have or in, in this case, they, they put default values in there since we haven't actually run the lines of code declaring them. But once we actually start running more lines of code, we'll see variables show up. That's what this uh, little, these windows here and the breakpoint and the step into all of that are doing. No, sorry, not step into, this uh, next line here. Now, the way we can actually step through the program, there are actually three different methods. Um, we have step into, step over, and step out. Uh, step out is pretty easy because it, if we are currently inside of a procedure and we want to exit that procedure, we can go out of it. That includes button calc underscore click right here, which we are currently looking at. But if we also stepped into another procedure that we had defined and we were looking at that and realized, no, this is probably fine, we can get out of here. You can step out and go back to the procedure that called it, go back to the procedure that you were in before you went into that procedure. That's what step out is. Step in, I kind of just described what that did actually, is if I was calling a procedure here, I could go inside of that procedure using step in. Um, do whatever I want in there, and then either just keep on stepping until we exit the procedure, or we could just step out if we don't care about it anymore. And then there's step over, which uh, actually just skips over any procedure calls. Now both step into and step over will actually go to the next line successfully. But the difference being that step in will actually go inside of procedure calls, but step over will go over them. It will skip the actual call and just show the result of what happens when the call completes. 
Uh, step over is probably safest so that you're not accidentally going into other procedure calls like to string right here. So that's what all of those do, and I'll show them off. Uh, step over, super easy. I can just click it right here. Also, I can uh, type Control Shift F8 if I want to, but I'm just going to click right now. But if I click it, it gets out of the procedure, and it because we are out of this procedure that I set the breakpoint for, it just continues the program as normal. And then I can try to calculate it again. And we hit the breakpoint again. So every time we run this line, this uh, procedure header in this case, it pauses and allows us, allows us to step. Now, um, if I also want to stop stepping, by the way, and I'll actually show off what stepping is in a sec, but I can just hit continue and that will go through as normal. So that means, you know, however many layers deep into uh, procedure calls you are, you can just hit continue and you'll get out of this break mode. Okay, so now let's actually start stepping. So what I'm going to do is I'll just hit step into for now. Um, and the nice thing is, is that it skips all of these variable declaration things because we already know that they're correct. Since if they were incorrect, it would have been a syntax error. Uh, unless we typed the wrong name, but then there would still be a syntax error down here because this name wouldn't match up with this name. So the variable uh, declaration statements we can probably imagine are just fine. But now what we have here, we have all the declarations and we start declaring deck discount 10. Now I put in $100 as the price, right? And we haven't run this line yet. But what we would imagine is if the price should be $100 and the discount is 10%, then deck discount 10 after running it should get uh, $10 because that's 100 times 0.1. So if I step into or step over, I'll step over. And we see now this red value right here. That deck discount is 0.0, .0 of type decimal. Notice it's not zero, regular zero, it's 0, 0.0, which is really interesting, isn't it? So that's not right. Because we expect to see a $10 discount because I had a $100 price. So something in here isn't going right. And I can do this again. Uh, and the red, by the way, for these numbers actually shows the last variable that was changed. But now des deck discount 20 shows zero which is also wrong because that should be $20. 20% 20 of 100 is $20. We can verify that one more time. 30 is also set to zero, but that should be a 30% discount of $100, which is $30. So the error is somewhere in here where these are all getting set to zero. We can be sure that these are getting set to the right things, but the error is in these uh, where, where the va where the variables are actually being set, and it's probably a common error between all of them. Well, the commonality between the calculations of each of these variables is we have deck price multiplied by some number, and those numbers are all non-zero, so deck price must be zero. And in fact, we can confirm that by seeing that deck price is zero. And by hovering um, over deck price and seeing that it has a value of zero. So either of those two ways we can use to see that deck price has the value zero. Now, um, that's not right because we should be putting the number 100 into it. But clearly that's not happening. We, we need to figure out why. So we need to look at where deck price is being set to old 100 and well it's not at all and that's the problem we forgot the try parse statement so we'll have to actually put that in and fix it now really quick i want to correct a mistake i made earlier between when i was talking about the locals and autos windows uh locals shows all of the uh variable values right in this area but autos doesn't actually show all of that it's actually showing more just information about the relevant, more relevant stuff. So um, I'll step out again. OK. 
calculate. Step into, step into, all that stuff. You might see that um, not all of these values are being held. It's only the stuff that is most relevant in context. For example, because label 30.txt is getting uh, deck discounts 30's value, it's going to show that value in the autos window, but also it's going to show deck price because deck price was used to calculate deck discount 30. So that's the difference here is autos is, it automatically shows ideally more relevant uh, values in here. But that's the difference between autos and locals. Um, locals, personally, I really like because you get this great picture of everything that's going on in the procedure all at once, but you don't have to follow that. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix this program. Uh, I'm going to say decimal.triparse uh, text price dot text uh, deck price, like so. And that should be what we're putting in, you know, where we're putting in the value for deck price. So when I put $100 in the text box, it will become $100. So let's start that right now. Um, 100, and I will run the breakpoint. We have all these zeros again because we put the breakpoint at the start of the procedure, which means that nothing has actually been initialized yet. I'll step into. All of these are initialized to their default values as zero. I'm about to run decimal triparse. Um, autos right here actually lets me see that text price.text holds the string containing 100. Uh, and then the text property of text price is the string containing 100. And then I also get deck price right here. And then of course it's showing deck discount 30 for whatever reason, but who knows the whims of the autos window. But I will go back to locals right here and I will I'll step over. There's a procedure call right here. I don't really want to go into the procedure call. I'll step over. If you step into, it won't actually do anything. Uh, it won't take you into triparse or anything like that. It will give you a warning. But now what we see is that deck price has the number 100 in it. And then I step. Deck discount 10 gets the number 10. Deck discount 20 gets the number 20 and deck discount 30 gets the number 30. Then I can step uh, label 30 dot text now contains the string with the number 30 uh, formatted to N2. Um, that's the red text right here shows that that text actually got updated in the last line. Now the next line we run will update uh, label 20's text, which is updated up here, and label 10's gets updated there. And then we end the sum, and we see that all the correct values are in the correct place. So that's what it looks like to debug using a breakpoint and stepping like that. And of course, if you want to get rid of a breakpoint, you can just click it again and it's over. And now when I run the program again, oh, when I run the program again, there we go. It doesn't break. It just runs like that. All right. So I have a different application right here. Uh, it allows me to put in the hours I've worked each week of a month, and then it adds those together and displays the total. Uh, but what I want to do is show a more streamlined version of debugging using this application. So what I want to do first is show what the problem is. And when you're doing it this way, you do need to be a little bit careful to really make sure that things that you're skipping are working. But I'm actually going to try to skip a lot of stuff. So week 1, um, 10, 20, 30, 40. I expect this to add up to 100. Uh, so I will calculate that. And you'll see that it adds up to 80 instead of 100. So something 
wacky is going on. We need to figure out what it is. Now, we know that the issue in our button calc underscore click function involves the calculation, right? Because we're getting the wrong value. We're getting 80 instead of 100. So we need to figure out what's going on in the calculation. And a good way to do that is actually setting the breakpoint to be the line of the calculation before the calculation actually works. The nice thing about this is this lets us check to make sure that we have the right values for all of our um, for all of our variables. And then if we are sure that we have the values right for all of our variables, then we can try to investigate why the calculation itself isn't working. Although at first glance, the calculation does look okay, which is another good reason why we should set the breakpoint at the calculation. So let's start. I type in 10, 20, 30, 40, like so. And it reaches line 29. It stops before actually executing it. We have, let's see, double week one is 10, which is correct. Double week two is 30, which is incorrect. Double week three is zero, also incorrect. And double week four is 40. 10 plus 30 is 40, plus 40 is 80, which explains why we got an output value of 80. So now we need to investigate why week 2 is getting week 3's number and why week 3 isn't getting a number at all. Alright, okay, well, in this case, it's a pretty simple um, thing to check. What we can do is check where we've assigned week 2's value and week 3's value, or at least where we are supposed to assign them. So. Week two's looks correct. Text week two dot text gets uh, that value gets converted to a double in place in double week two makes sense. Text week three's value gets converted to a double gets placed in double week two that doesn't make sense. So this double week two gets set to the week two value and then the week three value, and then week three doesn't get set to anything. So this is probably a uh, copy and paste error or something like that. I, it happens to me all the time. So I will uh, stop debugging double week three, um, start debugging again. 10, 20, 30, 40, calculate. Uh, and double week one, two, three, and four look pretty good. Um, I can step to the next line. We see that double total now gets the correct value instead of 80. So that looks pretty good. Um, I'll do one more run through without the breakpoint just to see how that looks. I can calculate and we get 100. So that's working perfectly. Here's an example that we've seen in chapter five, which is a program that just displays the first five numbers, one, two, three, four, five in a label like this using a loop to actually generate them. Um, now what I want to show off is a way that you can actually use breakpoints like this to help fix your while loop conditions and uh, actual updating things. So let's say for example I said do while int num is greater than or equal to 5 instead of 5. Actually let's do uh, 3 just to make it easier on me. Then when you're running the program, nothing actually happens. It still responds, so it's not an infinite loop, but nothing is actually happening. Well, I don't know what's happening, so I'm going to just set a breakpoint at this while loop and see what's going on. I'll start, I'll display, and I hit the breakpoint. So now int num is equal to one. Um, I'll run the next line of code, which is this while loop right here, it's going to do the first condition. And hold on a sec, the, the next statement is end sub. So it's completely skipping over the while loop entirely. 
Well, that means it's not entering the loop at all, which means that the condition doesn't like the starting value, but it's supposed to start at one. So the condition must be wrong. Oh, and the issue is that, well, you know, this condition is false. It's a do while loop, so it has to be true in order to run. One is greater than or equal to three. So that is a false condition. Well, it's not behaving as expected, which means that this needs to be less than or equal to, not greater than or equal to. So that's one way you can, or one problem you can fix using a breakpoint just like that. All right, so here's another issue. Um, I'm going to hit display to show off all the nums and nothing happens again, but this time the program is completely frozen. Well, that looks like a classic infinite loop to me. So let's figure out what's going on. Let's see, I have a do while int num is less than or equal to three. That's right. Well, you know, actually let's set the breakpoint and see how that go. So I display, we hit the breakpoint. Int num is equal to one. I uh, step over, label nums.text, uh, that gets updated. Let's see, we don't really care about the, um... actually if we do care about it, we can take a look at autos to see that label nums.text is the string containing one. Um, there's all this stuff in the locals thing as well, like the result of int.toString. two string result of uh, the concatenation, all that kind of stuff, and then what the uh, result of, um, you know, what the thing that was put into dot text ends up being. But now our next line is int num minus one. We step and int num gets zero, which seems like it's running in the wrong direction, right? So we can step, 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 now int num is equal to negative one. Um, step, step, step. By the way, we can also see the list right here uh, in label num cell text is one, zero, negative one, and so on and so forth. But now, um, after running this, int num is now negative two. So we're going in the wrong direction since the condition up here is while it's less than or equal to three, but we're going down. Um, that's the kind of thing we can see. In this case, we can see that we're going in the wrong direction. Uh, what we could also look at is if we were going in the right direction, uh, but the condition itself was wrong. So let's say do while int num is greater than or equal to zero, right? Um, say we thought we were going down, but then we decided to change it to make it go up. And then it, uh, we forgot to update the condition. So in this case, um, I'll just step pretty quickly here, but int num is now two. At this point, int num is now three. We would expect it to go one more time. Int num is now four. Uh, uh, we go through again. Int num is now five. The number four is currently in the label. That's not right at all. We keep on going and so on. So the fact that we've gone past the number three, which is where we're supposed to stop, should say that our condition is broken. And then we can check the condition and say, oh, look, it's zero. So that kind of thing. This is really helpful for more complicated conditions and more complicated update things. All right, so that is logic errors and using breakpoints to actually help fix those. Uh, logic errors. And remember, um, you do actually need a breakpoint in order to step through things. The textbook says that you don't, but they're wrong. You always need a breakpoint. So showed you hopefully a few helpful examples of using breakpoints like that.